Coming up today on Locked On at Texas Tech, Houston, you've already proven enough. Why even show up at all? I make a compelling case for a forfeit from Kelvin Sampson's squad next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you're going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of five bucks or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Got an action-packed episode today as we Wrap up the week and look ahead to a big one. Another survive and advance do or die situation for Texas Tech as they're back on the floor taking on the Houston Cougars. The Cougar hunt continues. Insert your own Lubbock nightlife joke where you like. We will spend some time before we're out of here talking college football as well because it's a big day for a college football fan. College football playoff decisions being made. What is to be revealed as the day goes on? We will get into some of that and other happenings already from the Big 12 tournament. But, uh, Chris, as we said on yesterday's reaction episode, hope you joined us for that last night. If not, if you haven't caught it, it's still there on YouTube for you to find. Uh, we talked about enjoying that BYU, BYU win last night, but really needing to turn the page eventually because you got as big of a challenge as you have had all season long. Certainly was the toughest that you had during the regular season in the form of of a uh, shortlist national title kind of favorite as the national tournament approaches. Kelvin Sampson and gang will be on the other set of benches and Grant McCasin will be trying to flip the script from what happened in game one and continue to roll this hot hand as now as four consecutive have gone the way of the Red Raiders. It will not be easy. And that's probably the understatement of the day, right? <laughs> yeah, th- this one, uh, this one's going to be a bit uh, tricky, but here's the thing. Here's the thing is that th- this is a free spin of the wheel. It's like if somebody gives you a free lottery ticket and says, hey, there's a giant wheel up here, just spin it. And if there's all these prizes on the wheel and maybe, maybe you end up with nothing, but that's kind of what you, what you have here. I'm uh, staring you at the face uh, tonight because – you know, you, you you took care of your business against BYU. I think that's going to pay some dividends for you. I haven't seen the numbers at the time you and I are talking and all the net across the country and all that stuff has not been updated from all the results from late into to last night. But this is the number one team in the country. Nobody nobody in the, in the country has a better opportunity for a resume-type win than what you do tonight at 6 o'clock. And that's the reality of it. And, and the beautiful part of it is, is that you have nothing to lose. Uh, it, it's really – and and I think that I need to tell you that tonight, any neutral fan that is in that building tonight is going to be rooting for Texas Tech. Yeah, They're not going to be rooting for Houston. I mean, and I think – but you've got to – You've got to earn some of their approval and, and all that by playing uh, well. You can't just get uh, – you know, beat up early and then just not use that to your advantage. Uh, but, you know, because people have asked me, what, what's the game plan versus Houston? Well, you say <laughs> a prayer to start, okay? And, uh, no, I mean, it, it's I, – I think you're uh, – they're one of the best teams in the country. We all, they're number one in the polls. They're number one in the net. They're, they're number one that they have the best defense in the country statistically and otherwise. Um, they're, for the most part, healthy. Um, and, and I, you know, I think we can expect Darion Williams to play today. Uh, I don't know at what percentage he is, uh, but I, I think that, you know, you, you'll get what he's got. Uh, and so, uh, but this will be a tough, tough ask for guys like Robert Jennings and, and Emily Alajo uh, down low and just in general. But, man, you, you've won, I think, four games in March all by double digits. And uh, I think uh, – you know, you, you are, like with BYU, you're much different now than when the first time you saw University of Houston. But they have the player of the year in Jamal Shedd, and if you remember back to that game versus Houston, he went for, I think, 31 and just wasn't going to let his team lose. And that's where the bulk of the scoring comes from. He is the head of the snake. Uh, and so you, you've got your hands full tonight for sure. But 
again, it's a it's a free spin of the wheel, man. Like you have nothing to lose and so much to gain. You imagine you pull this off, uh, and and the different conversation we're having. If you're playing on Saturday afternoon, if you, if you upset the Cougars, because I'm guessing you're going to be about somewhere between an eight to ten point underdog against these guys tonight. I think when all is said and done, but maybe even a little bit more than that. I'm not sure, but I, I just. Uh, I love it because it's a it makes for a great opportunity, and Grant won't, and these kids will not back down at all. Uh, and again, you'll have a lot of uh, support of your own, and then maybe some neutral uh, patrons uh, applauding for you as well. We'll take it. Plenty of room on this uh, bandwagon, no doubt about it. Welcome, and here's your free set of complimentary pistols. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that Kelvin Sampson is pumping this into his team's locker room because here's my message for them. Just like you're saying there for the Red Raiders, for Texas Tech, nothing to lose, free spin of the wheel, everything to gain. Houston, what do you have to gain from this? Should you even show up? Maybe just wave the white flag. You already got regular season hardware. Let's not be too greedy. Why do you even have any interest in this tournament? I say rest, Jamal Shedd. You want to re- uh, risk injury or just fatigue? Give me a break. I say just rest him, keep him and street clothes. So anyway, I don't know if they'll take me up on that idea, but last time around, Chris, yeah, not only the scoring punch that you saw from him with 29 points, but 10 assists against only two turnovers. I mean, that was my first really up close and personal look at uh, Shed and not surprised when it was all said and done. He was conference player of the year, defensive player of the year, which I thought was really admirable and, and respect worthy for a guy like that who can score so well to be such a, a guy that's tuned in on the defensive end of the floor also. But uh, I kind of wonder maybe what you've seen so far, not only in a Texas Tech game yesterday, but uh, in some of the games that have played out otherwise. And I hate that this is even potentially such a factor, but, you know, how the game is going to be called because clearly back in regular season play, so much physicality. And this was one of those games where it felt so suffocating as far as what Houston was able to do to Texas Tech uh, on the defensive end of the floor Is it even significant enough as you shift into tournament play from your perspective so far for it to be a part of this conversation? Do you think it's over-talked as far as the way that the game could be called, or or how do you see that part of it? I think at times it's still over-officiated, you know, I I think. uh, But I think in in a case like tonight, I think you kind of want it to be called a bit tighter. I mean, they – I mean – if I tell you that TCU out-rebounds, you know, Houston by 16 – you know, before that game is played yesterday, you're thinking TCU probably is pretty in pretty good shape and maybe pulls off the upset. Right. No, no, not at all. They got so <laughs> many rebounds because they were, you know, forced into so many bad shots. And I think it equaled like, you know, TCU shooting like 23% from the field or 27% for the game, something, something crazy. And, and that's because of Houston's defense. But they're not going to let you – you know, they, they want to let, uh, allow Houston to, you know, bully uh, and, and do what they do at the Fertitta Center in Houston, which is just a snake pit. Uh, but I think you want it to be called a bit tighter if, 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 that's, your, if that's your question. And, and we've seen a little bit of both. I think it depends on the crew, depends on the game. Uh, they, they typically in these settings let a little bit more go than normal, and they don't get influenced by – you know, a home crowd or anything like that. It's, it's, it's typically fairly even, but I also think that they let a little go, which may not necessarily benefit you here. Uh, if they're going to let you, you, you get mugged and things like that. Um, it's just, but, but I've seen plenty of ticky tack. I mean, there were some calls against the uh, BYU that I thought were, were pretty ticky tack going both ways. Uh, but you know, I, I just think Houston's defense is just, it's next level, man. They just don't let you breathe. And, but if your guards can figure it out and crack the code a bit, uh, and and you and you shoot it decently, I mean, because shockingly, you played one of the better first halves that anybody else had against Houston the first time against these guys. They just kind of pulled away from you at the end. And keep in mind, you got them maybe at the worst possible scenario after they had lost some games <laughs> yeah. and they were coming home. And it was like, uh oh, you know, and and they're not, and, and and in this case, they haven't lost since February the third, you know. Now I don't know if you catch them fat and happy here, but like you mentioned a second ago, there's nothing for the. It doesn't matter if they lose by 25 points to the Red Raiders tonight; they're going to be a number one seed, and, and and almost assuredly placed in the Dallas region of the NCAA tournament. And so it, it's just about trying to. I think Kelvin Sampson is almost trying to prove a point and like. 
you, you know, everybody talked about this team coming into the league. Not only are we going to win the regular season, we're going to win the postseason. We're going to own this league in year one, and it's up to the Red Raiders or somebody on the other side of the bracket to stop them from doing that. <laughs> Man, just amazing to consider uh, the type of year that they've had. Would you say they haven't lost since February 5th? Third. February 3rd. Yeah, third, and whatever. I think that was, that was when they, they just didn't show up that, that Saturday afternoon in Lawrence, Kansas, which everybody kind of had that game yeah. circled. And you got to be careful about circling games, as we know. Uh, <laughs> ask uh, ask uh, Trevin Nell and the BYU Cougars. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, they just didn't show up. And I think it was because Kansas just shot the lights out that day. You're going to have to – there's going to have to be a semblance of shot making uh, for you to win this game tonight. That's just all there is to it. You can't, I don't know if you're going to be able to get to the free throw line and manufacture offense that way or pound into the post or, you know, things like that. There's going to have to be a level of shot making that's going to have to be a part of uh, a potential upset tonight for sure. So Houston's been having a good time in Kansas City so far. Texas Tech has had a good time in Kansas City. I'd like to move on to some other happenings as far as the tournament or this time has been concerned because uh, we've had some shuffling as far as uh, a head guy at the top of one of these teams and maybe more to come. First, today's episode brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Today's episode brought to you by Amazon's Fire TV, your destination for sports from live games to highlights and beyond. Fire TV offers incredible viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick, which you can just plug, boom, right into your existing television. And you got access to millions of movies and television episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the upcoming college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And that's not all. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all of your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV or Alexa devices. And if you haven't done it already, you don't know what you're missing. Trust me on that. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Uh, Mike Boynton, no longer the head coach at Oklahoma State. And what is this I'm hearing about Scott Drew potentially being <laughs> on the move, Chris? Yeah, you know, so obviously, you know, West, we showed up the other night and West Virginia was here. They took a flight home after they lost. Uh, that, that press conference by West Virginia Athletic Director Ren Baker has now been, what, 36 hours ago, I guess it's been. And you know, they are on the hunt for uh, a coach. Um, and then we were, you know, before uh, the Tech BYU game yesterday, you started seeing those reports that Mike Boynton had been dismissed. And that's an expensive decision uh, for Oklahoma State to make. You know, I think Mike Boynton was kind of playing the, the we got to do a better NIL job around here is kind of what he was saying a couple of weeks ago. Well, Oklahoma State just spent $9 million to make him go away, you know, and that's that's a heck of a pill to swallow. Now, did they negotiate some sort of buyout or something? I don't know, but that's – on paper, that's what they would have owed him unless they came up with something uh, that, that was, uh, uh, you know, that, that lessened that burden. I, I'm going to, you know, take it that they owed him $9 million. And so they're on the hunt. And then – and, and, and in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning all these things, and then we're going to tie in, you know, all the, the, the reports about Scott Drew in Louisville, whether you believe them or not. It's all tied into the same thing. 
so what what is fascinating to me is is that I think the West Virginia job is maybe a bit better in reality than some people may think because I think they have their NIL act together. I think Scott Drew or his people or somebody there is trying to leverage folks in Waco to up their NIL game. That's what I think. Hmm. Um, it, it's almost like, uh, hey, you know, like, you know, do I think Scott Drew's going to Louisville? Not, not at all. Do I think he has legitimate interest? No. They just built him a, a brand new building. He's ranked in the top 15 regularly. They've won a national championship. I'm like, seriously, I don't care what Louisville, Louisville people want to think about their stupid program. It ain't that good. It's on hard times. Uh, and, and, and you can kind of try to puff your chest out about Denny Crum or Rick Pitino all you want. You, you, you're, you're in a bad spot. It's Denny all Crum? About... That's in the Wayback Machine if you're puffing <laughs> yes. out Denny Crum. Oh, I, I mean, the, 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 the Louisville arrogance yeah. that I've seen about this job just cracks me up. Um, <laughs> but but it, th- this is all NIL related. And I think who, yeah. what schools have their act together and, and who doesn't. And I don't know how much Oklahoma State – uh, you know, has has spent uh, of, you know, of, of a savings or, or whatever money they've used to make Mike Boynton go away that would hurt them in a potential new situation with bringing somebody in. And But these are the, these are the questions these coaches out there are asking. It's not, sure. hey, we won a national championship here or we got this great place to work out in. It's like, man, d- do we have a setup to where we can really get players and compete? If not, I'm going to look somewhere else. Yeah, I may want to live in this part of the country or this state or this city uh, or play in this league, but at the end of the day, th- this has to be right or I'm going to move on. And I think right now, like a, a school like West Virginia actually has a pretty good setup because before Bob Huggins went crazy and had his mishap, they had a really good roster. It shocked everybody. And you've seen the pieces that some of them we were talking about, but that <laughs> roster included – it included Joe Toussaint. It included some other guys that bailed out whenever the move was made because on paper, had their team had a chance, the, yeah, had Bob Huggins been able to coach the team as they had constructed back in, in late or early spring, I guess it would have been, they were going to be a problem, you know, and, and but then it splintered and Bob Huggins was let go and guys left and all those things. But it, it goes back to the NIL part of things and, We'll see kind of what, what that looks like for Baylor and what it looks like for Oklahoma State. But don't be surprised with some of these coaching moves and all that. You just have to remember the layers of the NIL factor coming, you know, uh, coming into it uh, when you go, huh, he would go there? Well, maybe he would. It depends on who and where and, and what they've got going. And don't be surprised, kids, uh, by sometimes the unseen dangers of recycling. Just another bit of wisdom and advice to throw out there. And it's kind of interesting. I mean, look, West Virginia, I think, is obviously a very good basketball program, a historically respectable program. If you want to live there or not, that may be up to you. But as far as the basketball program is concerned, um, I'd certainly say they're a good job. I'd put them in that category. The NIL component takes it a bit further, whereas I would look at Oklahoma State and maybe historically think some fairly similar things, like good job, good category. Uh, you've competed there before, have one on a big level there before, and at least once upon a time, there was tremendous support. But if the NIL is lacking and you've got to be the guy to come in and really generate that type of push or that type of infrastructure, when you could find it already set up, I mean, yeah, why why would you want to take on that challenge? Maybe there'll be somebody that does, but it, it makes sense what you're kicking out there. And, you know, I enjoy uh, every opportunity to beat Scott Drew and compete against Scott Drew. So I guess I'm not all that down. Uh, to hear that he's going to be there for the long haul, which obviously it's already been a long haul and a successful haul for him. Uh, But there was somewhere in the back of my mind just toying with the idea of could the Big 12 be rid of Scott Drew and a program that he took from the depths of despair? I mean, covering up homicides, kids, (laughs) to one of the preeminent men's basketball programs in the country. I did toy with that idea a little bit, but yeah, sounds like the odds are very, very long (laughs) that that would actually happen, right? Yeah, I, I, I just don't buy it. I mean, I, I think there's maybe legitimate interest in trying to stoke the fires there, but I think there's the angle there. You know, that yeah. I just refuse to believe anything 
other than that. And, and yeah, I don't want to sit here and talk about Scott Drew too much, but it's largely the basketball equivalent of what Bill Snyder did in Manhattan, Kansas. It's one of the best program turnarounds in the sport, True. period. And they've, they've gone from the doldrums to, to the mountaintop. And, uh, but, you know, in Oklahoma State's got some decisions to make on how they want to do things and, you know, and how what, what kind of setup they want to have and, and all those things as the rules are changing and everybody's trying to figure out what, you know. But, like, one of the names you're going to hear, and he was really good at the NIL game when it wasn't legal, and that's Will Wade at McNeese, the old uh, LSU coach. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was – uh, Well, and the FBI has already got a field office in Stillwater, so that would be pretty easy I for mean, them to just – Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that may oh, be we've why, already got these phones tapped. <laughs> that may be why Oklahoma State's like, man, we just can't hire you, Will. We've already had some of these issues. I don't know, but – he, you know, somebody's going to take a chance on Will Wade and will probably look really smart at doing it because the guy can flat out coach. Uh, and so, anyway, it, it's just interesting time of year and, you know, with a lot going on from a basketball standpoint because the carousel is starting to starting to turn a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, there's some folks in the Big 12 that need coaches. The two, the, what, the the 14 seed and the 13 seed uh, uh, now wanting to make new hires. And uh, we'll see kind of what happens with the whole Scott Drew and Louisville and Baylor thing, which I think is a big bag of nothing, but just trying to yeah. offer up some context there. Well, and this entire conversation is happening while uh, Nick Saban weeps quietly in the corner of his bazillion dollar beach house summer home. So we must keep the Saban family on our minds and I, in our hearts as well. I think it was Miss Terry that was uh, really <laughs> with the complaints uh, about the way up. everything was going sideways. Yeah. Oh, you know, Terry? Guys, I, <laughs> guys I, my wife just told me, sweetie what are we doing this for they're just uh like you know they they don't they're not worried about you know the tide or or winning they just want the most money i mean you know think anyway, of the that, academics nick <laughs> think of the academics i don't know that whole deal <laughs> <laughs> hey what a segue though because i wanted to end this on a monetary college football footing so we could slide right in to that First, today's March Madness Bracket Highlight brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each day, we're picking one team that's standing out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. And these teams were able to take it to the next level. And today, it's your very own Red Raiders finding a way through the woods against BYU, just like the Nissan Pathfinder, creating a lane for big-time opportunity against the number one team in the nation, Friday night. You can make your own way with the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop today at NissanUSA.com. Be on the lookout as we head into the weekend for some decisions to be made as far as the college football playoff and basically one step taken to get us further toward what will be the next iteration of an expanded college football playoff. Remember, we're not just talking about this 12-team bad boy, we're talking about a four-team bad boy, as apparently, according to some ESPN reporting yesterday, and I suppose we'll see this come to fruition today, we're going to see some announcements as far as revenue share, which will be unequal, and payouts are concerned among these conferences, and the pontiff from upon high, Notre Dame. They get the biggest chair. It's a Phil Jackson-sized chair, but here's the way it'll shake out, according to some reporting as far as some averages concerned on an annual basis, Big Ten SEC, more than $21 million per school. And when you're talking about the ACC, $13 million, Big 12, $12 million, Notre Dame, $10 million. I've seen reported unto themselves just to grace us with their presence. God bless. Uh, Chris, this is going to be just another step along as we get closer to officially getting into this 14-team mode. If this is all agreed upon like they think it's going to be, and announced as expected, uh, the next step will then be for them to basically complete the television deal with ESPN. So we're talking about from 12 to 14 and some of these dollars finally getting slotted in. I know if you're a Texas Tech fan, Big 12 fan, ACC fan, whatever, certainly you're not just over the moon about unequal revenue sharing. But in a lot of ways, at least speaking personally as a Tech fan, I just feel like we're hanging on for dear life for the ride and right now we're still riding. So I don't know what you make of it, man. We knew it was kind of coming, but how do you feel seeing some of these numbers kicked out? <laughs> well, the way I the way I saw it phrased was 
it's like a Godfather offer. You can't refuse it. Um, you know, it, it, it's <laughs> we better get a cannoli with that. <laughs> that's, that's right. It's an offer you can't refuse. You know, um, I, I I think because uh, there's there's so many layers here. It's disgusting to me that Rutgers and Vanderbilt and a Mississippi State and some of these just Indiana, these nobodies, nobodies and always going to be a nobody are getting a big old fat wad of cash because people happen to live where their school is located or something dumb that, that happened when realignment first started and they were trying to figure out, you know, what, which, which is now we've all been told that's not even really important anymore, you know, about population and TV net, you know, markets and all the stupidity that, that went on it. So a couple things, one, this whole thing really frustrates me. Um, I don't like it. Uh, I, I, it's, it's going to be, it's going to continue to be frustrating. And I think it's going to be like the next six or eight years that the way this is going to set up that I think Brett, your mark has kind of talked about, a or been quoted as saying there's going to be a look in here based on realignment. I don't know what provisions have been added if, if, if anybody switches. Because, I mean, imagine what sitting there at Florida State sitting there thinking. You think they're all of a sudden, okay, we're, we're good in the ACC now. Right. No, they'll be like, folks, this is exactly why we went out of this league and to kick rocks. But does that automatically mean if they were to switch and go to the SEC or the Big Ten that they get the, the big share? You know, I, I, there's some dynamics here, but uh, they've, they've, you know, factored in some possible more realignment here in the coming years. But what, what I what I think I noticed in some of the reporting yesterday was the Big 12 presidents. And I saw President Skubinik at the game yesterday. I wish I'd asked him about it. Uh, but and, and then Brett Yormark, obviously very prevalent at the Big 12 tournament, uh, at the T-Mobile Arena and everything like that. But the Big 12 is unanimous. OK, there wasn't any naysayer amongst the, the, the folks representing the league as far as, you know, so they were all on board with getting less. And so it, it's a painful reality that you better take what you can get because you could otherwise you could be stubborn and get and just say, man, we're going to do our own thing. But you just weren't prepared to do so. I think you're prepared to take the 12 ish in a million, maybe it's going to be more than that. And then, and then, you know, uh, but, but here's what else hasn't been decided. Calvin is that we still don't know exactly what that gets you at the very minimum, your champion or your top ranked team is going to get an automatic spot in this deal. But we don't know if you're getting that second spot. We don't know if the big 10 and the SEC are getting their three deals. We don't know about, you know, the, the automatic bye weeks, uh, which I kind of hear there was so much, I say bye weeks, automatic buys uh, in the first round, um, and, which that got yeah. so much negative attention. I think that they may have tabled that discussion based on what I had kind of heard last. So we don't know the format, I guess is my point. But as far as money and, and distribution, yeah, you're going to get about what, what I'm not good at math, but that's about what nine mil less a year than the SEC, and the big 10 and about one less million a year than what the ACC is getting. So uh, kind of hard to stomach for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I, I don't know, man. As a Texas Tech fan, from our perspective, I'm like somehow just at ease. And maybe this is just me embracing some horror. But for my entire existence as a Texas Tech fan, you have competed with neighbors, not just conference members, but neighbors in your state, two of them specifically, who are richer than 10 feet up a bull's ass and only get richer every day day they're more well financed than the kingdom of god in college station and austin texas and i'm just thinking you know what have they done with that clearly texas has had national title level success in my lifetime and in this modern era and they've smacked you around plenty of times i mean the aggies didn't have that they had conference hardware at the very beginning of the big 12 but it's been a coin flip kind of series between texas tech and the aggies during the course again of a more modern era so i don't there's something about that kind of just jaded nature where I'm just like, sure, throw more money at it. I bet that'll fix it. Now, I know that Matt, that money matters, obviously, and there will be separation and more separation when it comes to poaching head coaches, assistant coaches, paying for recruiting visit, plane trip, whatever it might have been. But it's not like the advantages, again, just from a Texas Tech standpoint, it's not like we had all of these advantages stacked up and now they're taking something away. I, I don't really know that, again, just speaking personally, my feeling changes all that much. Still, somehow, some way, Texas Tech 
to the tune of 100 years almost from a football perspective. It's been able to step up to the line and trade some blows. So I think they'll continue to do that. I can't speak for all these other programs and how their fans feel about a monetary golf increasing, but that's kind of the way I feel about it. What's new? We've always had to compete with those who are, what, pumping in or pumping out. Uh, another $100, $130 million as far as an athletic budget is concerned. And they're in the same state. I mean, we don't even have to go very far down the road to find those kinds of programs. So I don't know. There's something about it that I'm just totally at ease with and excited as a fan to just have that result in a better postseason, a better playoff, a better way to determine a national championship, which I think improves uh, the experience for us as a consumer, finally, because rarely is our experience actually improved. Yeah, and, and, I mean, and you make a great point. Uh, I mean, I you know, I think some would say you've always been getting a lot less. Um, you know, I think that even in these recent years of the Big Twelve, I mean, you know, the the SEC and the and the Big Ten have been getting a lot more than you. Um, where, where I think it may change or or may be altered a bit is if they start to revenue share. And if they start to do some of those things and, and then, you know, if, if, okay, well, here's the salary at this school versus here's the salary at this school. Yeah. If they start bringing some of this stuff in house, uh, which is what they're talking about. You know, a lot of the schools are saying we want to do NIL through us. Like we want to run it oh, through our really? school and the athletic department. Yeah. I can't like, believe like, that they want to do that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who saw that right. coming? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, the, the whole thing, though, is just it, it just smells, um, you know, and, and again, because some of it is just dumb. It's like I can't imagine the, the, the Big Ten and the SEC folks are going, will you look at what we dragged across, you know, over here that we're going to give this big wad of cash to? Like, do we really need to do that? I mean, you know, and, and I, I guess at the first round of this stuff, they felt like they needed to and everybody was grabbing markets and all that. That's the part that's like, it's like I did. I just refuse to admit that like someone like Rutgers is better than the Texas Tech <laughs> because their status in college, you know, the way that they're the league that they're in. I'm like, save it, man. Rutgers hasn't been relevant since Greg Schiano was chopping wood, and they were fancy little, you know, chrome helmet story from. But years Rutgers ago. brings you New York, Chris. Jeez. New York City. Rutgers. I brings mean, New York it, City. it just it makes the veins in my neck want to stick out. I, it's like, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, we're already down so, that road, though. We're so far down that road. <laughs> I mean, and, and Vanderbilt fires their basketball coach because they're awful. The Red Raiders, you know, uh, you know, hum, hum them up, and they're in, in downtown Fort Worth, and. Uh, they're always going to be the, you know, anyway, whatever. I'll get over it. Uh, it it's the new normal. Yes. Uh, it's just, I, I refuse to admit the to the power two and all this, all this crap uh, that I'm already <laughs> seeing about the, these two leagues and this and that. Um, so if, if you don't get any automatic buys uh, from those two leagues, I think it'll be straight up. And I, I can stomach a bit that, you know, yeah. maybe maybe somebody got a little more scratch than uh, than you did, but uh, and it just means at the end of the day, Callen, my my final thoughts are: it just means you must do more with less and be really good at development, and be really good with who you hire. And I, I think in the two programs I work with right now, I mean, with Joey McGuire and Grant McCaslin, I can't think of any two people that are in a better spot to squeeze more out of out of less than those two guys um and your your nil situation is is very good and so we'll, we'll just see but uh, anyway i just I, I was bugged by the whole thing but well it is and what it is. a lot of what you're saying i'm not so sure that I, I don't know in a lot of ways how it sounds any different than back when uh spike dykes was having to wash everybody's socks over the weekend to get them ready for practice <laughs> on monday well chris <laughs> we got our ox in a ditch and we just couldn't get out. <laughs> we know big challenges uh in west texas so uh we will move forward uh with great bravery and by the way your descent will be lodged with the power to ministry of truth so be expecting an invitation to a re-education camp uh, sometime soon just want to put that out there and prepare you for that dare you go against the power to it's Purdue, sir, Illinois. Have you forgotten the stature? Maybe you have, uh, but they'll tell you in the re-education camp. Okay, back to basketball coming up today and back to it on the other side. And maybe we're talking about another game to be played in the Big 12 tournament. We know we will be otherwise in the national tournament, so still plenty more to come. Hope you'll get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts if you haven't so far so you never miss an episode. 
Chris, appreciate the next one uh, coming up or enjoy the next one coming up and appreciate your time as always. I'm going to tell you right now, we, we play on Saturday afternoon and I'm going to get over served, uh, you know, tonight. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you now, you, you pull this upset Check. off, man. I might, uh, I might partake more than I should and I'll enjoy the heck out of it, but I hope to see everybody in downtown Kansas city at the building uh, tonight. It's a lot of fun. And you, the, the, your your team is going to need every bit of it, and got to make some shots. But uh, we'll uh, we'll break it all down, man. Enjoyed the time, Cowan. Really good week, and uh, we got another one coming up next week for sure. And uh, for the children in the audience, he is talking about barbecue sauce, <laughs> boys and girls. All right, for Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Thanks for being out there. We hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.